Hey friends, welcome to this week's edition of live Q&A. We've got all kinds of questions to cover. Thank you for being here. You guys have asked some fantastic questions as usual, and I can't wait to go over everything. So where are we going today? Let me tell you what's coming so you can stick around and make sure to hear the answer to the question that you have asked, okay? So here's the questions that we are covering today. <clears throat> Number one, how often do you educate your clients about pricing? Number two, how do you prepare your clients for mini sessions versus regular sessions? Number three, uh, do you have recommendations for help with editing? Number four, what is the best way to keep edits consistent um, in color? And what is number five is what is a print credit strategy? How can I encourage print sales through this? And lastly, how can I recommend other local photographers that better fit an inquiring client's budget? So <clears throat> as usual, we have a huge wide variety of topics to cover and I cannot wait to join or to jump in. But to everybody that's here, if you don't know me, my name is Sabrina Gebhardt. I'm a lifestyle photographer of more than 10 years and a photography educator of six. I am a course creator and I'm going to be speaking at Reset Conference next month. And I go live here on Instagram every Thursday, midday, and we do Q&A. And these questions are questions that everybody has asked. So. Wednesdays, I drop a question box, thir and all day Wednesday and Thursday morning, people ask questions, and then I just go through them. I literally pick every single question, and um, it's always a mixed bag conversation, which makes it super duper fun. Please know, you can ask questions in the comments. So if I'm talking and you come up with something that you're curious about, drop it in the comments and I will get to it. This will be fast and furious, so buckle up and hang on. And if you are catching this in the replay, you can ask questions or make comments or send me a DM. I would love to hear from you. Are you guys ready? Okay, so <clears throat> we're gonna jump right into the very first question, which is how often do you educate your clients about pricing, meaning why it costs, what it does, and all of your expenses and, and all of that? So <clears throat> the short answer is I don't. And that doesn't mean you shouldn't. I don't. And I do want to encourage you that if you feel the need to do this, I would keep it really light. Okay. I know what it feels like to have somebody tell you that you're not worth your price. Um, you're not worth the cost of a session. How dare you charge that much? Blah, blah, blah. Right. There's, that's a whole other cop topic for another day. But um, pricing is a really sensitive subject to entrepreneurs, photographers, right? And um, I just want you to know that whatever your prices are, it doesn't matter how cheap you are or how expensive you are, you're going to have people push back because there are just people like that in the world. So instead of taking the approach of feeling like you have to explain yourself because you're angry and you can't believe that people are questioning your pricing, if you are going to educate, do it in a light, fun way. Um, making a reel on Instagram about all the costs that go into a session would be hilarious and great and also very educating, okay? Or writing a lighthearted blog post about, I know you think that I make $450 in one hour, but actually it, it takes me eight hours to work through you as a client from start to finish. And so when you break that down, I'm not making that much or whatever, okay? So I would keep it light if you are going to educate. Um, but here's what I really want to encourage you to do. I would encourage you to spend more of your time, instead of educating people why you're charging what you charge, try and get people that value what you charge. Spend your time um, making efforts to pull in the right people because the right people are literally not going to care what it costs to work with you because they wanna work with you that bad. Okay, so I would put your efforts into finding those people, finding the people that will support your business no matter what you charge. Okay, I have clients that I have been working with for almost 10 years, almost the entirety of my business. My rates have gone up more than 10 times from when I started to what they are now and they still book me. They have come along for the ride. They figure out how to pay for it because they want me. Okay, so I would really, really strongly encourage you to, to put your effort, instead of explaining yourself, if somebody sends you an inquiry and they're like, oh my gosh, I can't afford that. Why on earth does this type of session cost this much money? Instead of educating them 
or creating something that would educate them, I would really spend a lot of time and effort trying to reach the people who want to work with you no matter what your charge. Okay, so that was question number one for the week. Question number two is... How do you prepare clients for mini sessions versus regular sessions? So basically, what am I doing differently to get my clients ready for their mini session that I don't do for clients with a full session? Okay, so my answer is it's the same process. Okay, I set a lot of expectations from start to finish, literally from the very first email before they book me to their booking confirmation, to their session prep guide, to their email the week before, to the email the day before, I am setting expectations and laying out things step by step explicitly from start to finish. I do the exact same thing with mini sessions. I am just very um, firm and even more explicit on this is a mini session. This is how much time you get. This is how many images you get. And really honing in on the details to make sure that they know exactly what is coming. And I spend a lot of time with my mini session clients making sure the number one thing is that they show up early. I really hammer that point home and I encourage them to leave earlier than planned because you never know if there's going to be traffic or you're going to have to change a blowout diaper or there's going to be some sort of drama. Okay. There's always drama on picture day. If you've ever had your picture taken, you know that. So I try and prepare them for those situations. Best case scenario, they get to the mini session location early and they're going to sit in the car for 10 minutes great. At least they are on time. So I really, really harp on them showing up early or on time. And I explain to them, if you are 10 minutes late to a 20 minute mini session, I'm not bumping everybody else back. You've just lost 10 minutes. Um, obviously, an extreme emergency situations, that's, that's another category. That's another conversation. But Generally speaking, you better show up early because when the session's over, the session's over and I have to move on to the next family. So I really harp on time and location. I make sure I send them the correct address or a dropped pin of a location multiple times and I confirm that if it's a pin, they have been able to actually click on the pin and open it and it reads correctly. I text them the day before so that they have my phone number in some last minute emergency situation, okay? So those are the only things that I do differently for mini sessions. It's really harping on time and location because I wanna make sure that they have that information up front. Otherwise, I do the same stuff to prepare my clients that I would for a full session. Setting expectations, a very detailed session prep guide, reaching out, um, reaching out the week before the session and then the day before the session, um, okay, so I just got asked, are all of these, is all of this correspondence planned through my CRM? Yes, everything is automated and or canned. So I don't necessarily have all of the emails automated, but they are all canned. Some of them will go out automatically. Others will go out. I have to go in and trigger it, but the email is already written. Why wouldn't it be? All of this stuff gets repeated over, 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 over again. Do not ever, ever, ever <laughs> type an email or, you know, just draft something from, from scratch. If you've, if you've written it one other time, then it better turn into a canned email, okay? So, yes, all of it from start to finish, the whole, every single communication is canned or automated through my CRM. Obviously not the text messages. That is a personal, I sit down and text them, but everything else is. Um, and for those of you that have grabbed my fall success kit or are going to, all of this is spelled out in there. Okay, so that was question number two. So we've covered so far, how do you educate clients um, regarding your pricing? And um, how do you prepare clients for mini sessions? So question number three, recommend recommendations for help with editing. So there's a lot of different places and people that you can go to to find help with your editing. I am an image salon junkie, okay? I have used the image salon for years and years and years. Um, this week I submitted like my 370th session with them or something. Um, it's like a huge number and they saved my life. So I love them. The reason that I like them versus some of the other um, editing companies out there that I've tried 
is their onboarding process. When you schedule an appointment to start this relationship, they will, you will send them raw images, you will send them final images, you will send them any presets that you use, and then you have a live screen share Zoom chat with them. It's not Zoom, it's through some other software, but you are having a live chat with them where they are watching you edit and they're taking notes and then they are gonna screen share and they're gonna edit and try and mimic you. And you get to tell them, oh, I need more contrast or oh, that's too warm or whatever. And so you are literally doing this in real time together. And so it really establishes that style. And once you get assigned an editor, unless there is a problem, um, you will keep the same editor forever. And so the more you work with them, the better they get at your style and um, really getting what you need out of every gallery. So I have used them for years and years. I absolutely love them. But if you are interested in something else, you can hire um, like an actual human that lives near you or doesn't via like a virtual assistant type thing. Somebody that specializes in editing or another photographer who likes to edit and takes on other jobs just for some extra income. That is always an option. Um, if you want to go that route, you can post in like um, photography Facebook groups asking for help for editing or on um, online job posting things like WeWork and not WeWork, Upwork. Is that what it is? There's lots of different avenues, but if you've never tried the image salon, I would recommend starting there because they are fantastic. The one thing I want you to know about whether you hire um, any kind of editor or go with the image salon or whoever you go with, you have to set this relationship now. If you wait until you're drowning and editing is too late, you won't have the time or the bandwidth to develop that relationship and to go back and forth and make the tweaks and get everything rocking and rolling because it does take a little bit of time to smooth out all the wrinkles and just kind of get everything in a good flow. You have to start early. If you wait until you are drowning in editing, you it's too late, okay? So you either need to develop an editing relationship now or wait until like December or January, okay? So Upwork is a great place to find an individual to help you with editing. Okay, so question number four was, what is the best way to keep editing colors consistent? Okay, I know this is a big one and a lot of people struggle with editing colors. So I've got four things for you because let me just reiterate, I am not a like an editing genius, okay? You would not come, you would not hire me to teach you editing. I don't have editing classes. You know, I'm not famous for my editing style, but I have been doing this for 10 years and I do have consistent editing, okay? So coming from that space, here are the four things I have to tell you about getting consistent color editing going for all of your work, okay? Number one is you have to be very firm and know your style. And that means you also have to know what is not your style, okay? So that's a really big piece of the puzzle for a lot of new photographers, okay? A lot of people who have been in business, I would say up to three years, honestly, um, struggle with what is their look, okay? Because we are just overwhelmed with images and work and Instagram and seeing all this beautiful artwork created all over the internet. It's literally thrown in our face constantly. And there are so many different kinds of style and editing techniques and who likes the dark and moody and who likes the light and airy and who likes the super high contrast and who likes the super bold and who likes the, the very matte and muted. There are a zillion different styles. Okay, and they're all gorgeous, but you have to really zone in on what is your style and therefore all of the styles that are not you. Okay, that unfortunately takes time. It's not something you can rush. You really have to work through and figure out what feels right to you. Where do you land? Where, um, where do you finally land when you see your work and you're like, that's it, right there. That's my favorite edit I've ever done. It's the perfect warmth, that's the perfect contrast, it's the all the things. It takes some time to figure out. So that is the first step in consistent color. You have to know what your style is and what your style is not, okay? Because knowing what it is not will help you avoid 
all of those mistakes that you can make in editing, okay? So um, number two, you need to have presets made, okay? Whether you are buying somebody's pre-made presets or creating your own or doing like a hybrid situation where you've bought some and then you've made it your own and then you saved it as something else, I don't care how you do it. If you are not using a preset, you are starting from scratch every time. It's literally the equivalent of what I just said regarding um, preparing for sessions. All of those emails are canned. I have a, a starting point for every single communication with a client. Same thing with images. If you have presets made, you have a starting point for every single image, okay? So if you are a indoor photographer or an outdoor photographer, or you do both, I would have a base preset that has nothing to do with color. It doesn't touch white balance. It doesn't touch warmth, cool, nothing. It has zero color in it. This is contrast. This is highlights and whites and blacks and shadows. This is your, your curve, all of that, okay? Just the base. I would have a preset for indoor, outdoor sunrise, outdoor sunset, and that's probably all you need. If you find yourself shooting midday or overcast or any different scenario, then you can have one for all of those as well. Have a base. Again, this preset has no color in it whatsoever. This is just a base. And so you're going to you know, shoot your session. You're gonna come home. You're gonna apply the appropriate base. If it was an in-home session, you apply the base in-home um, to it. And then you go you mess with your color from there, okay? And you can create, um, you can create a color preset for different locations. I think personally, I like to do one per session, okay? So let me explain that. I shoot ninety percent in home. You guys should know that, okay? So because of that, every home is different. Every home has different color casts. Every home has different um, wallpaper and paint and colors and details and, and all the things. So it's really hard for me to have a color, uh, a color controlling preset that works for all of my in-home. But if you are an outdoor photographer, especially if you are photographing the same locations over and over again, 100% you should have a preset that touches on color for that location. And if this sounds really complicated to you to have all these different presets, you guys creating a preset takes mm, six seconds. I, and that's not an exaggeration. It's literally a click, a drop down, and it's created. It is so fast and it is a game changer. That is what is going to get you consistency. Okay. So, um, yeah, and she just said, I have all of my different presets based for different lighting, studio, golden hour, low light, indoor, and they save me so much time. Exactly. You have to have a starting base, okay? And then you touch on color after that. But you can touch on color and create a preset per session, okay? So this is the number four, my number four step for getting consistent editing color is the biggest and I think the most often skipped. If you are editing a session and you are struggling for whatever reason, you know, the greens are too green or somebody wore a red shirt or there's a crazy color cast because of a, you know, funky wallpaper like in my office or whatever, whatever you're struggling with, walk away. Literally walk away, come back the next day, okay? Like literally put it aside and come back. I guarantee you, seeing it with fresh eyes fixes the problem. We stare at our computers so much. We fine tune colors so much. And no matter how much you have trained your eyes to see color correctly on your screen, they get tired. Okay, so when you are in the situation that you are editing a session and for whatever reason you are struggling and you're like, something's off, but I can't figure it out. I've messed with the, the warmth. I've messed with all of the colors. I've messed with everything and I just can't figure out what is off. Walk away. Stop trying to dig at it even more. Walk away and go do something else for a long time, maybe even overnight, like I said, and then attack it the next day and I promise you 
that problem and the accompanied solution will jump out at you, okay? You will all of a sudden see, oh my gosh, this image is crazy too magenta. Or, oh my gosh, what was I doing? The purple's here all over the place or whatever, okay? It will jump out at you because you will have fresh eyes. So that is my top, top tip. So again, the question was the best way to keep editing consistent with colors. I said, you have to know your style that comes with time and practice and really honing in. Number two is you have to have a preset for every different lighting situation that does not touch on color, that only touches on everything else, shadows and contrast and highlights, etc. And then I would create a preset for every location, outdoors, if that means creating a, a preset for every home that you shoot in, a studio preset, because that's where you can manipulate the colors and have them consistent across the gallery. And then the number four tip is when you are really struggling with a gallery, walk away for several hours, if not overnight, and then come back to it with fresh eyes. And I promise you, the problem that you were struggling with will jump right back out at you, okay? Number five question for today is, uh, what is a print credit strategy? How can I encourage print sales this way? Okay, so uh, print credits are fantastic. Hi, Angela. Print credits are fantastic, and they absolutely do encourage print sales for your clients, okay? So I'm gonna tell you four things about print credits that are great. Number one, you have to include them, okay? So that means you have to have some sort of gallery software that... Um, allows you to give a print credit and have them shop in your store where you have priced the products so that you have a markup on them and uh, you, you are either self-fulfilling those orders or they are automatically going to the particular vendors to ship to your clients, okay? So you have to have it set up first and then you have to have the process set up. So whether they get a coupon code or um, However you set up your galleries, you've got to give them access to print credits. And I would do it for every single session, mini session, full session, add-on sessions, everything. They get a print credit because you want them in the store. You want them to get used to browsing the different products and being forced to place an order because it gets them in the habit of doing that from you. Okay. It also gets them in the habit of receiving professionally created art whether it's a canvas or it's framed art or it's, you know, calendars or prints or whatever it is, you need them to get used to seeing how incredible professionally created art looks versus when they take it to Shutterfly and place an order. Okay. That is that right there is what will create the habit of them being like, and I'm done with Shutterfly because now I see what my art is supposed to look like. Okay. So the second thing is you need to find time to show off what different products look like and actually educate your clients. I think Instagram stories or Instagram reels are a great way to do this. So hopefully you are practicing what you're preaching and you have artwork hung in your home and you have albums created from your sessions and take this opportunity to treat yourself if you don't order stuff in all of the different products that you offer so that you have them tangibly in hand. Order those deckled prints, order that calendar, order the stationery, order whatever it is you offer, and then educate your clients on what it looks like. Get on Instagram stories and be like, look what I got, my new album, and flip through it and talk about what the paper feels like and how the cover feels and how beautiful it is, okay? If you're educating them, then they're seeing, then it's, it jumps off the screen. They're not just shopping in an online store. They're seeing somebody handle it, okay? So that's one way that you can educate on products. Another way is if you, especially this is great for mini sessions. If you were hosting mini sessions, let's say in a studio, bring a whole bunch of products and lay them out on a table where people are coming in and waiting for their turn. So that then again, you are putting products in front of them so that they can touch them and feel them and ask questions about them, okay? And another way that you can educate is a blog post. You can take photos of your products and then you can write about them. Better yet, you can do all of the above, okay? But point is you are showing off and educating these uh, your clients about products and what you offer and why they are so great. 
Um, a third thing for a print credit strategy is you wanna make sure that you have automated reminders, okay? So you've already got this print credit set up and the session is over and they've got their gallery and they've got their you know print credit code or whatever. You need to have automated reminders sent out to make sure that they're actually shopping and they're actually spending that print credit because believe it or not, that's not a huge priority for a lot of people, okay? They get this print credit and then they're like, oh, well, I really just wanted the digitals and I downloaded those and I forgot about the print credit and then I'm just gonna let it slide, it's no big deal. You gotta set up those automated reminders to get them in the store and spending money, okay? And then the fourth thing about a print credit strategy and getting clients into your shop to order products is to offer sales. So um, the bigger gallery softwares have the ability to do this. I cannot speak for all of them because I have not you know, learned every single system, but I know that Shootproof and PickTime do this. So you can like twice a year, you can open up all of your galleries and turn on like a print sale, okay? And then you can send like an email to everybody just encouraging them like, hey, we're running a print sale, 20% off of everything in the store and it's valid for four days and your gallery's already been reopened, happy shopping. You would be shocked at how often people actually turn around and order something when that happens because they're thinking about gifts. I highly recommend you do this before Mother's Day and around uh, Black Friday, Cyber Monday time, okay? When people are in gift giving mode, okay? So those are the four things I have for you in creating a print credit strategy and encouraging clients to buy product. Last question for today, uh, question number six is how do I recommend other local photographers that are a better fit for an inquiring client's budget? That's not your job. I don't mean to sound crass, but that is not your job and you don't have time to go research a bunch of local photographers and what their pricing is so that you can give a breakdown of, oh, well, here's, okay, that's your budget, cool. Here are the photographers that fit that. That is not your job. I 100% believe in having a list of credible referrals to give out when somebody tells you that you're either not the right fit or if you don't have time or whatever. And if somebody tells you, I'm sorry, you're great and all, but I can't afford you, do you have any referrals? You can easily take the same list of referrals that you always send out and give it to them and just preface it with, I don't know what their pricing is you can reach out to them should you think they are a great fit and speak with them yourselves. But I can personally vouch for them. They have a beautiful style. It's similar to mine. You know, I know them, whatever it is, okay? But it's not your job to have vetted all of these other photographers. So do not waste your time on that. You can very kindly bow out of that conversation, hand them your list of other referrals and move on because you don't have time for that. Okay, so um, for everybody that's just joining in at the end, hello. I wanna let you know that this is what we've covered today because we are coming to the end. So I will save this on IGTV and you will be able to get all of these answers in the replay. But here's where we covered. Number one, how do you educate your clients about pricing and what it costs to run your business? Number two, how do you prepare your clients for mini sessions versus regular sessions? Number three, do you have recommendations for help with editing? Number four, what's the best way to keep editing colors consistent? Number five, how do you create a print credit, credit, uh, print credit strategy to get your clients ordering prints and products? And number six, how do I recommend photographers that um, to somebody who's inquiring where I'm out of their budget? Okay, those are the six questions. I'm curious. I have been videoing a ton of session behind the scenes content of me shooting live sessions, like literally recording what I'm doing and how I'm working with clients and all of this. Is that valuable to you? Um, I'm thinking about releasing some of these videos um, if there's interest. If you think that sounds really cool, let me know, shoot me a message, uh, drop me a comment and let me know. I'm just trying to gauge interest here. And if I do that, it's gonna be very inexpensive, like under $50 probably significantly less than that because I, I want it to help, right? That's all I have for you guys today. And if this was valuable for you today, would you share it to your IG stories and tag me? I'm like so Instagram obsessed and those little tiny things are super helpful. I wanna know that I'm helping you. I wanna support your business and cheer you on. Thank you for being here, my friends. I'll see you next week.